And now we will have the last presentation of our morning session to be delivered by the historical uh, by the Deputy Director of International Historical Commission Education Programs Coordinator, Mrs. Ingrida Vilkienia, who is uh, first of all known for her uh, organizational skills, her exceptional energy, and uh, who is doing much more than developing curricu school curricula, who uh, changes history teachers' mentality. Maybe she will not acknowledge this, but nevertheless, this is as I see her. And now let's give the floor to Mrs. Ingrida. Thank you, Nerius, for this uh, nice introduction. Well, I would like to say that I um, represent the organization about which Nerius said uh, that uh, the person who can remember the name of the organization uh, is worth a special gift. Well, we have a brief name of ours. However, the official name is really long, and as the topic of this forum, my knowledge is related to both negative occupations, Nazi and Soviet, and as to how we implement our educational activities. This international commission is analyzing both Nazi and Soviet crimes and consequences for our society. I will try to be brief and speak slowly. As you have seen it in the corridors, we are presenting our publications, our books. The research is presented in those publications. Not all the research has been documented, but however, you can find them on our website. And the reason why I am showing you these books is that is as follows. When I was um, admitted to work in the Commission, we identified our goal uh, to reflect all the research made since our Commission includes historians from various countries of the world and who are putting every effort to investigate these complicated periods in our history. We are implementing educational activities starting from 2002, and this is our main focus. It includes interviews with teachers, discussions with teachers. There are lots of various teachers in the world. And uh, seriously, seriously speaking, I myself have an 18 years experience of teaching, and I understand that a good teacher can encourage you to think, to give you wings, whereas a bad teacher may cut your wings and ruin you as a personality. We are working with teachers because the teacher is communicating with pupils every day. The teacher may give his whole heart to pupils. He or she can give guidelines to the pupils, and it does not uh, we don't consider that the good teacher is the one who prepares students very well for the examination. This is not the most essential thing. What is most essential is to teach a young person to think, to have his opinion and objective attitude towards history, so that the person is able to analyze and to make his own conclusions. The program we are implementing has a very long uh, title, just like our organization. 
a program of education on crimes of totalitarian regimes, crimes for humanity, prevention and tolerance development. Our goal is not to make, to create problematic things, but rather to look for tolerance aspects so that we could speak to one another. To, whether we speak about victims, saviors, or killers, what we need to do is to analyze why this was happening, why people chose one or another way. And speaking about Nazi and Soviet occupation periods, those were periods when tolerance was absent in the society, and what was happening in Lithuania and other countries is related to the lack of tolerance among people. As I have mentioned, what we seek is to educate an active young person so that he or she is able to assess historical events. And we also devote a lot of attention to developing the ratio between the person and history around him or her the history of his family, the history of his environment, so that a young person is able to analyze the events and make conclusions. What we focus is also uh, young people's participation in after-school activities because we believe that the teacher may encourage pupils and involve them into the activities they have never thought about. We have four main directions in our uh, program implementation development of tolerance center networks. These are centers established at schools. In our conference today, we have uh, teachers from various towns, who represent namely these centers. This is a club of uh, like-minded people, not necessarily his teacher, uh, teachers of history. They may teach different subjects at school, but these are teachers who consider preservation of historical memory very important, and this is why they participate in various projects and uh, take various initiatives. Another uh, direction of our activities is education of teachers. We conduct seminars and workshops in Lithuania and overseas. We are also engaged in project activities, commemoration of uh, uh, dates, famous dates. We encourage people to commemorate important events. We initiate uh, projects, we participate in them. And the last direction is methodology as to how to teach about totalitarian regimes. Uh, the activities we uh, are engaged in is of recommendation character. We, we cooperate with a number of institutions and um, Let's say if we look at the statistics of this year, up to date, the 16th of uh, November, so far we have had 11 workshops and conferences with a participation of 748 people. We had one international workshop in the English language that was all organized uh, together with Auschwitz uh, Museum. We have had a participants from Poland. We also had two workshops for our teachers abroad. Uh, one was about Holocaust in Yad Vashem in Israel and one in Poland. 
Our tolerance centers are uh, shown on this map. You see the red dots in places and towns where we have our uh, partners who help us to cooperate, who help us to implement our ideas. Some of these dots represent several centers. For instance, we have 16 of them in Vilnius, 11 in Kaunas, and uh, seven, even seven centers in Kedaini, even though it seems to be a small town. In general, we have 18, 89 centers in Lithuania. As for commemorating historical dates, we certainly commemorate the dates established by the state, but on the other hand, we initiate commemoration of these dates so that the teachers involve their own students to these commemorations, because it is not enough to know why we have a black ribbon on our national flag. The teacher should share his or her personal experience with the students, so that students could ask his or her own parents and uh, relatives or friends about that particular date. All of us know uh, the tradition of candles light, uh, lit on the 13th of January. Embassies and various public institutions have joined this initiative. And it's very nice that people, be it elderly ones, elderly pensioners or young uh, mothers, raising their children also join our initiative and lit candles in the window on that particular day. The 27th of January is the International uh, Day of Remember, Remembrance of Holocaust Victims. This year we have initiated commemoration of uh, the 25th of March uh, deportations in 1949 from the three Baltic states, the Operation Priboy. The initiative was supported not only by active schools but also by Lithuanian embassies abroad. And here you can see a picture from the Lith Lithuanian embassy in uh, Tiflisi in Georgia. Together with other institutions, we organize commemoration of the Day of Mourning and Hope, the 14th of June. And what we do is trying to engage pupils into some wider activities. For instance, last year, no, sorry, it was this year, on the 14th of June, that we had a civic initiative a suitcase. One month prior to the event, we asked schools to look into the notes of former political prisoners and deportees uh, to get additional information, whether they had any possibility to take their personal belongings with them, how much time uh, they had to pack their things. And uh, pupils were quite active in this initiative. Some of them found old suitcases and trunks of their parents and relatives brought from deportation. That was a kind of a personal history and a personal experience for many students, many pupils. And we believe that the pupils who participate in these campaigns understand that this is a part of their history. We also initiate the commemoration of the 23rd of September, the Lithuanian Jews' genocide. 
Probably representatives of the Jewish Museum can uh, correct me if I am wrong, but before the commemoration, we uh, encourage pupils to collect information as to how many Jews lived in one or, an or another town or village. Uh, what uh, relations did these people have with their neighbors? And namely this year, we have encouraged uh, the publication, the book about the Jewish community, just to widen people's knowledge as to how these people, citizens of our country, lived. As Mr. Sujedelis yesterday mentioned, if a person is a citizen of Lithuania, no matter what nationality he or she is, he is a part of our history. I would like to congratulate you on the 16th of November, International Day of Tolerance, which is today, and more than 600 Lithuanian schools today are commemorating this day. The schools are commemorating this day in one or another way, and this year we have offered the initiative to create a tolerance umbrella. The umbrella is something that we really need in autumn, especially in Lithuanian climate. And it is uh, quite important because under your big umbrella you can also invite another person whom you do not necessarily like or who has the same opinions of many things. But this is just because you have tolerance. Certainly, we had very many intolerance examples in our historical experience, and this is a very uh, good day to discuss the phenomenon of intolerance in our schools so that we can speak about it and develop tolerance by touching some historical examples and events. This picture is supposed to be one of the highlights of our program. Uh, if priests belonging to different religious uh, communities and faiths can join efforts in pushing a vehicle, probably we can also join efforts and look into historical events with tolerance. As for methodological recommendations to teachers, uh, teachers can decide whether to accept our recommendations or not by organizing uh, teachers' education. We try to visit certain places related to the topics, to the historical events ourselves, first of all. And this is why we organize conferences, not only in Vilnius, but also in small towns. For instance, a multicultural center in Kedaini, Telshei, other places. We have arranged a number of uh, excursions, because we believe that the teachers will transfer the knowledge gained during these uh, trips and uh, events to their pupils. We invite eyewitnesses who have suffered from both Soviet regime and Holocaust. You can see an elderly lady, Elena from Kedaini uh, district, who was imprisoned uh, for her help to Lithuanian partisans. In another picture you can see a Jewish man who was rescued from ghetto by kind-hearted people. And the experience of these people, be it subjective, is a key to future education. This is what we believe. 
And uh, our partners, teachers, also understand that live communication usually leads to very good results. You can find more information about our activities on our website. That I don't know if I have any time left. I would just like to present you one example. Uh, for instance, one year ago, I was invited to participate uh, in an event held in a gymnasium in Telshe, commemorated to destruction of Shoulei get of Telshe ghetto. The event was organized together with the priest seminary. I invited one colleague from another tolerance center from Vilnius, and we have both decided to see what our Telshe teachers will present during the event. It was a conference just like this one. Some presentations were more interesting than others. Uh, there were about 200 people, pupils representing all Telshe schools as well as uh, quite a number of uh, teachers. It was the second part of the conference in the afternoon. Suddenly a lady climbed up the stage and started reading quite a boring presentation. She said she was one of those who rescued a number of Jews. And I was asking uh, a person sitting next to me why was she reading from the paper. She could have a lively presentation. And quite of a sudden she put that paper down and started speaking. As soon as she started telling her history. All the people became extremely interested. They stopped chatting among themselves, and her story was really extremely interesting. She spoke about 1941, when Nazis took a decision to establish a ghetto in Telshe. Her father was a little over 30, uh, he was married to her mother and her mother was expecting her. They decided to rescue a number of uh, neighboring Jews, Jew, Jew family, together with another neighbor. But as this lady, whose father decided to do this, has, this, has taken a decision to uh, hide Jews in their house. And this was how they have had hidden 43 Jewish people. They did it from in, during the period from 1941, 1944 opening the bunker, the pit, every night, feeding these people. One more girl was born in the pit, a Jewish girl, a Jewish baby was born there. It means that they rescued more people than they thought initially. And this lady spoke in an understanding as if everything was understandable by itself. And all of us who were sitting in the hall and listening to that narrative, we were wondering how they managed to do this for three or four years. And the story taught us really a lot. In the beginning, it was the sacrifice, ability to help people. It was also about those who were trying to find these people. It was only four people, two families, afraid of asking help from others because you never know 
what happens. You couldn't completely trust other people in that complicated period. And the research conducted by historians in our commission are also extremely important because the objective truth is important. However, our personal experience is really extremely valuable. I believe this and I believe that many of you also have the same opinion. Let me wish you good luck and congratulations on the Day of Tolerance. Thank you, Ingrid. It is always a pleasure to hear you. Do you have any questions for the end of the session? The interpreters cannot hear the speaker because he is not speaking into the microphone. I will repeat the question. The question was whether these uh, people are writers among the nations. Yes, they have received the certificate of the writers of, among the nations from the State of Israel. I'm not clear about the psychology. In Vidukle, farmers had uh, prepared places for all the local Jews to hide, but the Jews refused. Maybe they trusted the Germans. How would you interpret that action? It's naive to believe that and trust the Germans. So they didn't hide, they refused. Excuse me. Excuse me, can you repeat this question? Sorry, but mm, I was concentrating on this, what Ingrid said. <laughs> Sorry. And the thing probably could be answered better for by Ingrid. The speaker is not speaking into the microphone. Maybe Ingrida would be the best positioned to answer. Could you repeat the question? Yes. In Vidukle, a small town in Lithuania, there were several hundreds of Jews, and the farmers of local village had prepared places, uh, hiding places for the Jews, because they recognized the threat uh, of death to the Jews. But the Jews refused. Why? I can't answer for the people who refused. I can just say my opinion of how long you have to work with the Israeli educators with whom we debate, and seminars are lengthy and very deep. Our teachers have also lots of questions, and the educators from Israel don't have answers as well. But some people from Lithuania emigrated before the war. And they emigrated from other countries as well. When they felt that something wrong is burning for them in Europe. In the north of Lithuania, there's a small town of Jagaria. A huge community of Jews from Jagaria moved uh, in 1933 to the US and uh, South Africa. A part of people didn't believe this would happen. The same is uh, to be said about Poland. I think uh, it's a uh, human condition to think that this can't happen. It's human. It's only human. To, uh, it's only that you believe that something can happen or you don't. It depends on a person. Some of the teachers in Lithuania asked why 
didn't the people run from the mass killing sites. The people who survived the Holocaust say that where would you run? Where? So these things are quite difficult to grasp. I can only tell you my opinion. I have a comment. First of all, the absolute majority of those people who refused to run away and hide in these situations, they knew that after they would run away, they would face a huge punishment. The Jews from Judaic families didn't run away because the, they didn't they, they trusted the family values and the Zionists thought that they wouldn't run. So all these moments are not just mechanical as we would think about. The situation was uh, dramatically difficult. Nobody knew what would happen. Many people believed that the killings ended after 1941, October, when after the uh, November events, the the uh, ghettos survived, so people hoped that uh, they would survive. The situation is a very specific one. When we speak about the people of that time, let's not just think about psychology. Sometimes people does, didn't have another choice. Yes, please. I would like to confirm what Ingrid has said. I am director of uh, a gymnasium in Lithuania and head of the Tolerance Center. On behalf of all the teachers of Tolerance Centers, I would like to thank Ingrid and the entire commission and uh, Ronaldus for the activities they organize for, with teachers and uh, through teachers with uh, young people. I think this is the most uh, meaningful activity in terms of his historical justice and in terms of the fact that we have to develop democratic values. We talk uh, during meetings and uh, seminars on the fact that uh, we are there for teaching the young generations so that this doesn't reproduce itself again, Solidarianism doesn't reproduce itself again. What I like about this conference is that uh, it is wide scoping and that we have an opportunity to hear various people talking about European events. I think the materials of this conference are very well needed by other teachers who can't hear it. Thank you for your event, and I thank the Commission. And uh, Ingrida in particular. I wish you every success. I can see there are more questions, but unfortunately we don't have much time. I, th I suppose we could uh, exchange some views informally during lunch break. It's good to hear that uh, people are willing to talk. It is my wish that during this conference people would have things to ask from the people who talk about things. Today we heard that we are the country which uh, suffered most. I don't think this is the right attitude to take. We will not be heard if we uh, take this attitude. We have to accept things. And if we talk about uh, the victims of the totalitarian regime, the European Jews and Poles are greater victims than we are. If we learn to adapt this, approach to our history, we will understand it better without losing the things we have lost before. So this is an ethical uh, ending of this uh, Tolerance Day, and I invite you to come back after the lunch break. Thank you.